If you're booking discovery calls and sales calls and they're not turning into clients or they're turning into clients, but you're not closing them at at least 50 to 80%, if you're taking a bunch of sales calls and you're wondering how the fuck do I get these people to pay me? You're starting to get really frustrated. This video is for you. I'm joined here today with Mr. David Solano. David is a sales guru from Germany. He works with clients all over the world. He's been in sales for 15 years, done over 30,000 sales calls. His average client goes from, I think you said your best client goes from zero to six figures in sales within 21 days, which is crazy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, total badass. So we're going to break down the five principles of what we can do to increase your closing rate from 50 to 80%. Yeah, man, exactly. So really looking forward to do, to to break that down in this quick video. Let's dive straight into it. Yeah, 100%. So principle number one, David, tell us about the sales paradise. <laughs> yeah, you know, so the sales paradise is 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 there where, where everybody wants to be. Let's uh, in our context is having the, the closing rate at least 50% to max 80%. So this paradise. And the thing is that most sales reps or sales organizations or people who who hire me, they think that this outcome is like on the other side of the earth, <laughs> right? That it's so far away. The reality is it's just in front of your nose and the things that make make it feel so far away is not the distance but is the things that you place within that what are the things that they are placing within that is okay. number one well what? let's let's say like before we tell you what it is comment below what do you think it is the difference between somebody who closes 20 30 percent and then 50 80 percent like they're in the big leagues up here is it your offer is it your skills your script is it your marketing is it uh maybe your competition and how how competitive is your niche what do you think it is comment below so what is this there's three things right what are the three things right so the three big pieces that are standing between these organizations people who are selling stuff most of it like high ticket is number one, it's mistake number one, is your thinking, right? <laughs> Nobody yep. thinks about that. Mistake number two is the skills and tools you're using. So your tonality, the way how you handle objections, uh, your presence, your energy, all of that. And number three is the system, the offer, which you're using also in your business. So like the vehicle. Right. Exactly. Okay. And when people come to you, what when they come to you, what is their main issue? Is it do they think it's the skills? Do they think it's their offer? Or do they do they already know that it, it might be something happening upstairs? The interesting thing is that they have a gut feeling that it's not something external. They know that they have just like this feeling it's something different, but in, in our like environment, Ben, in which you and me, we are in, the people are so conditioned to look outside of them, you know, they are looking for, okay, where's the next script? Where's the next thing, right? Where's the, the super duper magic voodoo question, right? <laughs> right. Just tell me the question to close everybody. They're like the, yeah, pick just, just, They're like just, the just, guy that's in his mom's basement, who just said, I want to, I want to date like the models Tell me the one pickup line I need to learn, like the one magical script, which is going to give me every girl when it's like, well, dude, it's you. <laughs> we have to change you first at a fundamental level, right? The way that you think the stuff that we're going to go into in this video. That's all I think about it. Yeah, definitely. So true. So back to your question, um, what people want, they say, David, I want that thing to get that thing. Give me the skills. So just just an example. I'm working with a new client since two weeks. And when I onboarded them, uh, the first question from the sales team was, David, what is it that we need to add? What tactic is it that we need to add into our sales environment to make a bunch of sales? I said, wrong question. <laughs> and they were like, why though? I said, the thinking is wrong. 
So you're thinking about having something, but at first you have to think about who you are, right? So if we look about the, the first principle that, that we have been talking is, is how are you thinking about sales? So for them, sales was just a thing. It's not a process, right? It, it's, not, it's not a path. It's just a question. It's just a script, which you don't believe in, right? Uh, a question which you say, I don't like this question, but I must ask the question because somebody told me if you ask this question, you will you will get a lot of yeses. So people don't don't get it that it's not the thing, it's them. And I think also there's a scarcity within, right? There's a scarcity within and and to say, okay, am I really good enough to sell that thing? Am I really good enough? to to do that thing so there's not only like the thinking about the way how they think about themselves just imagine if you've been in a rut for a pretty long time you stay in that rut you want to have the shortcut what is the easiest path to change something like thought it's the easiest path to change something it's doing something external you know changing your hair you know when you break up with a relationship what is that you that most women mostly do they get rid like they they go to a hairdresser and give themselves a new look right right okay let's get myself fresh yeah you know but internally they shift nothing so it's only still shit but outside looks good <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so there's like a disconnect and the same really happens with sales so you got this like totally unhappy person and now just wants a happy script, right? So unhappy happy externally, unhappy internally. When those two frames collide, guys, trust me, there's world war, right? Unhappiness means happiness means chaos. <laughs> so first principle is that, just to recap, there's some type of mistake and they're thinking about sales in general. And the next yeah. piece is the way that they think about themselves and the way that they see themselves and and like they're still focusing too much on what, what am I doing wrong versus what how am I thinking wrong? How am I showing up differently? Exactly, right? And then if we go then into the into the third piece, which is uh, the skills, right? Let's say you wanna uh, Ben, you and me with them talking about that. You know, you remember the, like the Formula One racing car driver, great sales reps, great sales advisors great sales organizations they're like a formula one racing team right so if you play somebody who has never driven a formula one racing car who always was driving a bicycle and you place this person <laughs> in a formula one racing car it's like uh, go to the graveyard mission in within two seconds right because this person doesn't have either one the mindset which we have been talking about number two the skills expertise and repetition and know how how to how to calm that beast how to control that beast right mm. because each sales rep he is like a like a formula on a racing car but they don't get it they think they become great in sales because they have a bunch of great questions which they don't believe in mm -hmm. but they don't see themselves as a great asset so their, their, their identity, like the way that they see themselves is lower. Yeah, than definitely. And when you don't see yourself in a rich way when it comes to sales, you will never be able to learn and to master those skills which are required to drive this really good Formula One racing car, right? There's a difference. So the skills are totally different between driving a bicycle <laughs> and a racing car. And that's basically the thing. So if you don't master the mindset first, then you will never be able to handle, to to train in this way. You know, Ben, it's, it's the same like with you when you do your workouts, right? At first, what was the first thing you must, you, you needed to do when you started your journey? Look, man, you have like an 18 pack right now, right? So just by doing the thing doesn't work. You must, you, you, you needed to shift something in your, in your mindset, right? What was it? Mm, good question. It made a bunch of changes, but the first one was, I, I, I can't remember. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. I, I can tell you, you believed it's possible, number one. Because we humans, we are led by belief, right? We go back to, to uh, uh, what's the guy who broke the four-minute mile? Uh, Roger Bannister. Yeah. 
So prior to him, nobody did it because there was like this society believe that if you do this in less than four minutes, your body will explode, right? Your, your, your legs will cripple down, like weird things. Yeah. And it's, it's exactly the same with sales. So many people think that having an 80% close rate is like out of space. It's impossible. You have to cheat if you do this. You're a cheater, you're a liar, right? They, they, they think we're doing so many bad things because it's just not existent and they're little like cat nope. brain. <laughs> <laughs> they're not able to think in this way. They're not able to believe, right? Either you believe you do, right? It's, it's be, do and have. You believe you will do it, you will have something or you don't. And so what you did, you just believe it's possible. And when you believe that's possible, you connected with the internal capacity because at the beginning, nobody has the ability, right? So you didn't have the ability when you started with your, either your sales career and your health career, the same with me, right. but I had the internal capacity, right? So the capacity is that you, that you believe you can, right? And while you, nurture this belief while you nurture this capacity the ability will come so it was the same with you with your gym journey the same with me i must believe that i am able to get a six pack boom that's it okay so the next one the next principle is your attitude your mood when do you have a special word for it mood. yeah exactly it's, it's the predominant mood we have a good friend that when he doesn't make like his predominant mood is if I don't make 30K a day, I will shoot myself in the head. Yeah, right? life's not worth living. <laughs> yeah, life's not worth living. Day day. But, so this is his predominant mood. And so the point is, what is your predominant mood when you wake up, when you think about sales, when you think about, about your calendar, right? When you open up your calendar. Because if you think about your business, I want you guys really to ask yourself, what is your predominant attitude slash mood? Write that down. What do you think about sales? Yeah, and one thing we spoke about is it's part of it's your expectations. If you open your calendar and you have nine calls in your calendar, like like I have tomorrow, for example, mm -hmm. are you going, oh shit, I gotta talk to nine people. Oh my God, this is gonna suck. I'm gonna hear a bunch of no's. I'm gonna get rejected. Or is it the opposite? Right? And part of it's like, are you creating a self-fulfilling prophecy based on your expectations? And that reflects in your mood, how you feel. And then you're showing up not at your best self because the past really you're like, oh, well, I'm in a rut. So like this, this is how people end up going from offer to offer. They add sales calls and then it just turns into a, this downward spiral. Yes, because, you know, the thing is, that they that they are lack, lacking data and you talk so often about that and i really love that right so what i mean by data so everybody in sales they just want to act but they don't understand and they don't know what's happening right so it's really important to to know what is driving your number one behavior number two results number number two is to really understand when something happens, how to categorize it, to be able not to react like a fuel, like a, like a full person, to be able to respond in a proper way that does not kill your predominant moods. Then in order to be able to act rich, to act prosperous, to act according to towards something. Yeah. What I also see around data is that so many people that just want to change the outcome. Hey, I just want to make more sales. I just want to make more sales. You know, but sales, having more sales is an output of a specific input, right? Like input equals output. If you don't take care of the input that you're putting in, means in our example, the way how you think, your identity, the skills you're using, the, the moves you're having. If you don't take care of this input, you can wish, pray and hope as much as you want the output will never land there. Mood, huge. I think the fifth and final principle is the sales temperature. What I mean by sales temperature is we also can describe sales temperature, your standards. So
So what a lot of people think in, in times when things get tough, you out of a sudden you will turn into Hulk. No, you won't. Mm. Right? So when life hits you, you will not have eight brains. You will not have five, five lakhs. You will not have three, three eyes to see more. No, the thing that happens, you drop to the level of your standards. And a lot of people think, okay, let's, let's become super me. Okay, but if the standards of your super me are shit, <laughs> right? Nothing will happen. So it really goes down to the standards. And what I mean, a lot of people, they have the standard of being okay with 1K commission and they are selling 15K offers, doesn't work. Or Sanders is selling like a 5K thing and suddenly they're trying to sell a 25K product or a 50K product. Exactly. And the same thing is also with, with closing percentage, right? So I had the example of somebody I was working with uh, because he thought that it, this high percentage, and this is a good way to explain how people also can self-sabotage their success. So we really did with him the work. We did the work with him. He had he had this series of calls. He had this 80% close rate. But the thing was, he said, man, there is something wrong. So what happened with him? He dropped his sales closing percentage went up or like his sales closing percentage temperature went up, but the core temperature was down at like 15%. So it didn't increase the core temperature. It was just a superficial increase, but not an internal light. It was an outside in increase, not an inside out increase. So his core temperature stayed small at like 15%. Outside he went up to, I think it was like, 79, 85%, something like that in between there, right after like, I think like seven days working together, which was really, really good. But then he dropped, he, he stopped the, he stopped doing the, the required steps, right? Because in order to be able to get at this level, like this is sales mastery, what is sales mastery? You don't get sales mastery, you earn sales mastery. Mastery is the result of having great habits. That's pretty simple doing the right things at the right time in the right way, both. And most people are fucking too lazy to do that, right? So you even wake up when you don't feel like that, you just fucking wake up because you, if not, your system will feel, man, man, I'm a loser, whatever, right? I'm lying to myself. And so this standard, this like sales temperature, this closing temperature was manipulated, was hyped. This, this is a good example, so I'm really honest to say, hey, like, People go up there, they don't stay there because they go back to their standard. They don't raise their standard. They don't raise this bar. They leave the, the bar low and they hope, expect that they can stay there without doing the work, you know, because most of the people that want to win the prize, but they don't, they don't want to put in the practice. You will never win the prize without practice. So now that you guys know the five steps, what you guys need to fix your mindset, you're probably wondering, hey, what about the other two pieces? The skills and the systems. How do I increase those to match the mindset so that you can go out and start closing 50, 70, 80%? So that's exactly why we put together our workshop for you where we're gonna go deep on how to implement those skills, how to customize the stuff to your offer, how to, how to get your standard up to a place where it doesn't go back down again, but we stay up there, that we have the right beliefs about ourselves, the right identity, the right moods. And if you're interested in that, you can shoot me or David on Instagram. There's, there's going to be a link in the description. Uh, just send us a, a DM saying the word workshop and we'll get you all the information on that. And, and yeah. to see you guys there, right? Yeah, we're hoping to see you there. If you got value from this video, make sure you like it, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.